Welcome everybody to another great tutorial. Today we're going to teach you how to make um, this design. I just made a pillow using the 4x4 hoop designs. You can see these are all small 4x4 squares stitched together, so I'll teach you how to do that. For the tutorial, however, we're going to make a larger quilt where I actually stitched the, the 9x9 inch blocks. As you can see here, these are the, the blocks I've stitched, all 9x9 nine nine hoop. Very simple to stitch. You're just going to hoop your um, cutaway stabilizer. And I'll show you here one of the blocks that I've done. This is my cutaway stabilizer. And then you're going to add your batting on top. And then you're going to stitch your first step that will just be an outline after which you will trim away the extra batting only so that you don't have any batting in your seam allowance. You will then add your layer of fabric on top and you just continue to stitch your design. So stitching out these blocks are really, really easy. There's nothing much to them. Um, in the zip file, you will however find step-by-step -step instructions on how to complete the steps. Let's go through all the fabrics you're going to need. Now it totally depends on, on what look you want. As you can see, I've used a light colored fa fabric for all my embroidery and for the backing I used. So just decide on what colors you want. I would say if, if you have about, depending on the size of course, if you're going to do the 4x4, I mean this is very small, so one yard of fabric would be plenty. There's 12 blocks, so you can just calculate if you've got 4x4, four four, just do the 4x4 four four times 12 and that will tell you more or less the size. Always add extra for cutting and your seam allowances for of course. This is not a very thick batting, it's the needle punch batting, so you're going to need that the size of your that your quilt is going to be. It doesn't need to be exact, especially if you didn't uh, plan ahead how many rows you're going to have. You won't know how big this is. So you maybe finish your top and then decide how big you want your batting if you want. I've just cut a rough piece. Um, I took my center and then I just added about uh, that much, I would say half a meter all around just to be sure that I will have enough for my quilt. Well, I've decided to um, add these colors to my quilt that I'm going to do and I might even add a little bit of lace on top as well. We'll see how we, we progress with the quilt. After you've stitched out your blocks, um, like I said previously, if you look at one of these blocks, you'll have an outline that will stitch, then you're going to place your batting, then you're going to trim away the batting and then another seam is going to stitch all your fabric together. Um, and this is your trim line where you're actually going to trim because I've already allowed the same seam allowance for all blocks. Now you will see on the 4x4 hoop uh, your seam allowance becomes smaller, it's a quarter of an inch and your larger blocks goes up to 5 eighths of an inch. Okay, just to recap, after you hooped um, your cutaway stabilizer, you will place your batting and you will stitch the first step with, which is an outline. That is your um, trim allowance for, for your batting, so you, you don't have any uh, batting in your seam allowance. After that step, you will trim away the batting, then add your top fabric, and then this step will stitch. Now, this step is just to tack down everything in the hoop for you, and it also becomes our cut line after we've finished. So after you've finished with your blocks, you're going to cut directly onto the line. You actually want to, to open that seam so I'm going to trim all around the block and you can now just open it up and just give it a good press so everything lies neatly flat. For the 4x4 hoop, I allowed a quarter of an inch seam allowance um, and then it goes to for your 8x8 hoop, it becomes a half inch seam allowance and for your 9 hoop, it becomes a 5, and, uh, five of an eighth seam allowance on the edges. But you can just place it under your machine and see how far from, from the edge you are if, if you are unsure at all. So I'm just going to go ahead and give this one a press and then we'll start assembly of the blocks. If there are any jumps, especially in areas where there was not an area that joined, you can just quickly trim that away. You can see I've got all 12 blocks 
stitched out and you can just lay them out so that you know which one follows um, according to which one. Uh, I can just mention perhaps um, if you are comfortable using a certain seam allowance on your machine, you can just turn your block the wrong way facing you and you can see the outline where we stitched in the past and you can measure from there and create your own seam allowance. That line you see is, is our actual stitch line that we are going to stitch these blocks together. And so from that line, uh, if you want a quarter of an inch seam allowance, just measure from there and trim accordingly. If you want half a seam allowance or whatever, you can just trim you, uh, according to what your machine uh, does, just to make it easier for yourself. Okay, we're going to uh, start assembling um, this quilt now. Uh, we're going to do row by row, and then I'm going to show you how to join the rows. So I want you to just place your three rows, or four rows, sorry, on top of each other and just keep them separate so that we can finish each row as we go along. So because we've trimmed all our blocks exactly the same size, assembly is quite easy on these. So just make sure you've got it the right way around and then just line up your sides And using your wonder clips, you can just pin them together or you can use pins if you like. I'll give you stop. And I do look uh, where I specifically want lines to join just to make sure um, that they are aligned properly. So you can just peek inside, make sure they join up nicely and pin together. And you can now stitch on top of that stitch line or actually just to the inside of it if you want um, you can just stitch these two panels together using a straight stitch because I've got a few layers together I like to Lengthen my stitch length a little bit to about 3.5 millimeters instead of the normal 2.5. And when you open it up, you sh it should line up perfectly everywhere it meets. You can just turn it around and I like to, as I go along, just open my seam allowance and iron it nicely. Um, it just makes for at least bulk as you go along. We're now ready to join the th um, third side of our first row. And it's going to be in the exact same way as the first one. So just pin together and then just peek inside and make sure that where something needs to line up that it does. It should line up perfectly because we've cut our blocks all the same size. So you shouldn't have any problems. And you can go ahead and stitch this one together, same as we did that one. After you've completed your first row, you can go ahead and uh, stitch together all four rows and then we'll be back to show you how to join the individual rows to one another then. So I'm going to do, uh, continue uh, stitching my blocks together off camera just to save some time and I'll be back after all our rows are done. You now have all four of your rows stitched together and we're now ready to join the individual rows. So again, you're going to place your rows on top of each other, line up your seams that you've got and make sure that we, the pattern needs to line up that it does. It should, if, if you had the, the correct seam allowance and it's all cut the same, everything should work out perfectly and your seam allowances will join up and your pattern will join up perfectly. So you can go ahead and line up your design, pin it and then stitch them together. After you stitch these first two rows together, you can go ahead and join another row and another row. I'm quickly going to join this one and then I'll show you how we go along.
I've now finished stitching all the rows and all the blocks together so you can see the size of this one is roughly 24 by I would say about 27 inches at the moment so you can make it as big as you want um, I am going to include uh, various hoop sizes um, and we're now ready to build it even bigger by adding these colored strips as you would like to to add them I'm first going to add a green um, strip and then I'm going to add a blue strip and I might put my lace in on the blue and then I'm going to add my butterfly fabric same that I've used on the pillow and I'm going to finish my quilt off with a blue backing and my binding is going to be these stripes so I'm first going to add one or two strips so I'm just going to show you how to, to add your strips but after I've done the first color you will know how to add the rest of your strips all around your quilt and you can build it out as big as you want using various strips or even little piece sashing strips whatever you would like to do so let's go ahead and add the green it really doesn't matter how wide you cut your strips you can decide on your own how wide you want it even your binding decide if you're going to make double fold binding or if you're going to make um, a single fold binding decide on how wide you want it and just cut your strips according um, to the width that you want so I've just cut roughly two inches this one is just under two inches and this one is three inches in width and my binding I've cut um, I think it was roughly four or five inches yeah almost six inches five and a half inches that I've cut my binding so do decide on what, how wide you want to cut and you can pre-cut all your strips as you would like now you're going to start with one strip and you can add your strips if you want to finish your your front first before you add your final layer of batting and your backing you can do so otherwise um, if you want to add your front and your back and your binding um, everything all at once you can uh, of course add your big piece of backing you're first going to find the center of your batting so I've got my large piece of batting and I actually it wasn't wide enough so I had to join it in the center so place your center of your quilt on the center of your, your batting and you can see I've got quite a bit extra on either side top and bottom as well and that is to, because I'm going to add strips on the sides and we can always trim it um, a little bit inwards as we go along so always make sure that you've got plenty of space to play with and make your quilt as big as you want to make it so I'm going to add my batting and I'm going to use 505 spray and just spray it and press it down just to keep everything together and then I'm going to add my back fabric as well at the same time uh, so that the front where the strips join the front and the back is joined all at once okay as you can see I've cut my batting quite bigger than my quilt and I've added a layer of batting behind the quilt and then I added my back fabric and I've sandwiched that together using fiber five spray which really helps it from shifting uh, while I'm going to stitch so we're now going to to start adding our strips on the sides so you can place your first strip and I'm just going to stitch a quarter of a seam allowance from the one side to the other side and then we're going to cut this off um, iron it open and then we're going to do the next side self-explanatory I think we have to do this to verduidelik alles nie. we're now going to add a blue um, strip and you're going to line up your blue fabric with the edge of your green fabric and you're going to place it right sides together 
and stitch a quarter of an inch right on the side. And you can see as I go along, the back and the front is everything is, is sandwiched together and it's all stitched together as we, we're adding more and more rows now. So go ahead and add your blue around and then I'll show you how to add your lace. I've just finished adding my blue uh, border all around and I uh, started adding my lace. Uh, now the lace we're going to add all around and I'm just going to use, use five or five spray as I'm going to add another layer of fabric on top. So I'm just spraying my lace with five or five spray on the wrong side. And then just place your lace the way you want it on the edge. And the five or five spray will keep it in place so we can add our next layer of fabric. Now for my final fabric, I'm going to use um, the butterfly fabric that I've cut. And I'm going to add that. I just want to make sure the writing is the right side up. Let me trim off this section. And I'm placing it on the edge of the lace, on the edge of the blue fabric. And I'm now going to stitch, same as I did with the others, a quarter of an inch seam allowance. And I'm going to go all around adding a strip of my blue fabric to my quilt. This will be our final um, row that we're going to add. Um, I'll show you then how to trim your quilt to size and then how to add your binding. We finished now adding the last row of fabric that I'm going to put around my quilt. I'm now going to trim my quilt, uh, the backing and batting, to um, the edge of my front fabric all around and then I'm going to just add my binding to my quilt. I'm just going to take my scissors and cut all around. You can use your rotary cutter as well. I'm doing a double fold. Uh, binding that I'm going to put on so you can p um, pin your binding to the back side of your your quilt but remember to leave it tail so we can join it um, afterwards. I already have a few tutorials on adding binding to quilts um, so I'm not going to go into depth um, on how to add your binding on this specific one but basically you just pin to the back then you'll stitch to the corner uh, about a quarter of an inch from the side then take it back, fold it upwards and fold it down. But I'll show you quickly just one corner and then I'll complete my binding. Um, if you want to know how to add binding, just look um, at one of my previous tutorials where I showed in quite a, a lot of detail how to add binding to your quilt. The link will be in the description. When you get to the corner of your binding, you're going to fold upwards. And I try and see that I've got a nice angle, straight angle here, and that, that is a more, more or less a 45 angle. And then just bring your fabric down again. And you can stitch again from the top right to, um, down, and you will go all around to, um, till you get to leave about a, I would say about a five, seven inch um, opening in the middle so that you can join your binding. Um, before we turn it the other way around. After you added your binding, your quilt is all finished. Um, you can see the back. These lines are where you actually added your strips in front, so your back and your front is um, stitched together. And remember friends, you can make these in your 4x4 hoop. As you see the pillow was made in the 4x4 hoop. There will be files for the 5 inch, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10 inch hoop so you can make your quilt large as, you would, as your hoop will allow you to make. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and spending some time with us and we hope to see you guys soon. Have fun!